Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So once again, I am Mam Ma Dea, your grade 10 science teacher. Right now, we are in week number 6 of the first quarter and today we will be discussing another lesson which is anchored with module number 6 entitled A Beautiful Disaster. So what is this module all about? This time, we will be discussing divergent plate boundaries and transform fault boundaries. As you can remember, last week, we finished discussing convergent plate boundaries and its types, namely oceanic-oceanic convergence, oceanic-continental convergence, and continental-continental convergence. Last week, we learned that each subtype of convergent plate boundary would result to a specific geologic formation or geologic occurrence. For example, oceanic-oceanic convergence would result to a volcanic island arc, a trench, and earthquakes. For an oceanic-continental convergence, it would also result to a volcanic island arc, a trench, and also an earthquake. And finally, for continental-continental convergence, it would result to mountain ranges. Last week, we also learned some examples of these geologic formations, which would arise from the different types of convergent plate boundaries. I hope you can still remember these examples. Now, for this module, our competency is still the same as last week. We would like to explain the different processes that occur along plate boundaries. Specifically, we would want to explain the process that occur along divergent boundaries and identify landforms associated with it, explain the processes that occur along transform fault boundaries, and identify the landforms associated with it, Next, explain the different geologic processes along the plate boundaries. And lastly, prepare a presentation on the different geologic processes that occur along the plate boundaries. As what I have said a while ago, our focus in this week would be the divergent boundaries and the transform boundaries or the transform fault boundaries. Now, let's go back to this map. Last time, I have already shown you this map and we have highlighted the red marks. The red marks show convergent plate boundaries. But right now, since we will be discussing divergent and transform fault boundaries, I want you to focus on the white and the orange lines. Now, can you see where most of the divergent and transform fault boundaries are located? That's right. So most of the divergent and transform fault boundaries are found in the oceans or in oceanic plates. Now what are divergent plate boundaries? Again, divergent plate boundaries, the term divergent has a root word diverge, which means to move apart. So it is a place where two plates move apart or move away from each other. It is also called a constructive plate boundary. If you remember, convergent plate boundaries, we use the term destructive primarily because one plate would go down or go beneath the other plate and undergo a process called subduction. However, in the case of divergent plate boundaries, since the plates are moving away from each other, the magma will come out in the middle and will produce new seafloor or new piece of lithosphere. That's why it is called constructive. We are continuously constructing new piece of the lithosphere. There are two types of outcomes or geologic landforms that can be created in a divergent plate boundary. 
they are reef valleys and oceanic ridges. So, reef valleys are usually found in continental lithosphere, whereas oceanic ridges are usually found in oceanic lithosphere. This diagram somehow summarizes what happens in a divergent plate boundary. When two plates move away from each other, unwarping happens. And then a reef valley would be produced in the middle wherein the land in the middle will be coming from the magma that goes up from the space in between the two plates that are moving away from each other. Then after some time, this reef valley will transform into a linear sea and since the plates are still moving over time, an oceanic ridge will form in the middle. Remember, the plates are not moving overnight. It will take millions of years before a very significant change can be seen. Just like what I have said last time, the movement is in millimeters per year. So can you imagine how small that movement is? But then, if we look at the change over time, the change would be very significant already. Now let's go to rift valleys. Rift valleys are deep faulted structures found along the axis of divergent plate boundaries. An example of a rift valley is this. So this is the East African rift. This part is moving away from this part. And this is part of continental lithosphere. Okay, so on the other hand, we also have a mid-ocean ridge. Again, the mid-ocean ridge or the mid-oceanic ridge forms in oceanic lithosphere. So it is the most extensive chain of mountains on Earth, stretching nearly 65,000 kilometers and with more than 90% of the mountain range lying in deep ocean. So it's like a mixture of mountain ranges and active volcanoes which are found in the ocean floor. And one of the most common or most famous mid-oceanic ridges or mid-ocean ridges is the mid-Atlantic ridge. As you can see in the picture shown on the screen. So the mid-Atlantic ridge is found in the Atlantic Ocean in between South America and Africa. So we know that South America and Africa are moving away from each other. This part, okay, this boundary in between the two plates would be the line where the divergence is happening. We also have the East Pacific Rise which is on the left side of the North American Plate and the South American Plate. This is also an example of a mid-ocean ridge. Okay, so in this picture, we can see the different examples of oceanic ridges or mid-oceanic ridges. The blue lines would be convergent boundaries, so just focus on the green lines. Aside from the East Pacific Rise and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, we also have this Southeast Indian Ridge, Juan de Fuca Ridge, then Southwest Indian Ridge. And you can see the rate of movements per year. From the numbers given, we can see that the East Pacific Rise has the greatest movement per year. That's 75 millimeters or around 7.5 centimeters per year, not per day. And then the Mid-Atlantic Ridge would be 12 millimeters per year and so on and so forth. So again, most of these mid-oceanic ridges or divergent boundaries are found in oceanic plates or oceanic lithosphere. So next, we also have a transform fault boundary. Now, how is a transform fault boundary different from a divergent plate boundary? Again, a divergent plate boundary would be plates moving away from each other. 
but a transform fault boundary would be a plate moving past each other or sliding past each other or grinding past each other. Okay? And remember that in this type of plate boundary, there is no production or destruction of the lithosphere. Unlike for convergent plate boundaries, which we call destructive, and divergent plate boundaries, which we call constructive, this one, the transform fault boundaries, we call them conservative. Why? Why conservative? Because again, there is no production or destruction. Sa Tagalog, walang nabubuo, wala ring nasisira. So again, remember the movement. The movements are sliding past each other. So the most famous example of a transform fault boundary is the San Andreas Fault, which can uh, be found in the Americas and passes through California. It is the result of the movement of the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, which are moving sideways. One is going to this direction and one is going to this direction, as you can see in the image. And if you have watched this movie, there's a movie that uh, is dedicated for this fault and the title is the same, San Andreas, wherein Dwayne Johnson is the main protagonist of the movie. So I don't know if you have watched this movie, but this movie is quite a good movie to see if you want to know what happens or what could possibly happen during an earthquake because just like uh, a while ago we have said that while there is nothing that is produced or destroyed in a transform fault boundary it would usually cause earthquakes bakit pa nila ginawan ng movie si San Andreas fault kasi si San Andreas possible siya na mag-cause ng tinatawag na the big one which is similar to the big one that we are been expecting in the Philippines. So, dahil mahaba si San Andreas Fault, any movement that happens anytime soon would cause great destruction. So, there. Let's now go to the simulation using the FET simulation that we have used last time for convergent boundaries. First, I will demonstrate a divergent boundary. So, let's try to see continental and continental, which as we all know, would produce a rift valley. So, let's use the automatic mode. Choose divergent. So, as you can see, after a million years, the two plates move apart and there's water in between already it's called the linear C that I have shown a while ago in the presentation still you have this magma that goes up and forms new seafloor and as you can see it was labeled as Young Oceanic Crust. Okay, so before this oceanic crust or oceanic lithosphere goes to the farther sides of this simulation, I want to stress out that before the plates produce new oceanic crust or new oceanic lithosphere it is a rift valley first so if we try to rewind that simulation the moment that it opened here it's a rift valley and then after millions of years again it is converted into new oceanic lithosphere 
okay so what you see in the middle would be a mid oceanic ridge or mid ocean ridge if we try to use oceanic crust we will be observing the same however we cannot really observe the difference because it's seafloor becoming new seafloor so here you have old you have old and then you have the younger crust in the middle okay so now let's go to transform fault boundary So what happens in the transform fault boundary? The plates are just moving side by side or grinding past each other. Nothing is produced, nothing is destroyed, but any movement would cause an earthquake. Okay, so that's all for our short discussion today. I hope you can Remember what we have discussed in the past few days, not only our lesson for today, but also the different types of plate boundaries, the different um, land formations that are created, and the examples that we have discussed. So, see you in my next video, and happy learning! Bye!